हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज़ नेहा मिस्त्री फ्रॉम जी एच बी सरदार प्राइमरी इंग्लिश स्कूल टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द फर्स्ट चैप्टर फ्रॉम स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स साइंस विच इज फूड वेयर डज इट कम फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन वी लुक एट द टॉपिक ऑफ द चैप्टर वॉट वी कम टू नो इज फूड वॉट इज फूड येस फूड आर द थिंग्स दैट वी ईट बट वाई डू वी नीड टू ईट फूड we need to eat food and we need food because we are living organisms and we need energy to do our daily activities if you do not eat food you will not have enough energy to even brush your teeth we also need to grow nourish our bodies and remain healthy for all this we require food and of course to fight the various pandemic diseases at present like corona virus we also need good and healthy nutritious food so eat your food well and remain healthy moving forward we will look at three or four pictures what is this picture do you identify it yes this picture's food item is readily available in the kitchen and is made in our kitchen by our mother every morning and evening picture number 2 picture number 2 is a very lips smacking yummy food item that we all like picture number 3 is more yummier and we all like to eat all these yummy food items which all of us like the most now can you think what these food items are made up of are these food items directly grown on trees mm, no are these food items directly grown on animals bodies mm, no then how are these food items made all the food items that we consume and eat are made up of a variety of things which are called as ingredients ingredients are the small small things which mix together in fixed quantities in order to produce our tasty and nutritious food now can you make the list of all the ingredients that are used in making all these three food items we can make a small table in the first column we will write the name of the food item and in the second column we will write the ingredients used the first picture was that of a roti the ingredients used to make a roti are wheat flour salt water and oil mixing in fixed quantities to make a dough and the dough rolled out to make a roti second were our noodles noodles ingredients specifically contain the dry maida noodles which we get in packets then we add yummy and nutritious vegetables salt pepper then various types of sauces etc third was our lips smacking burger we all like burger and we know that the ingredients of a burger contain basically burger buns or the breads cheese vegetables butter and various other ingredients in fixed quantities now moving forward we look at two different food items again mm, can you identify these food items yes now can you make a table similar to one we made before for roti noodles and burger yes we can you can pause the video and make a list of the ingredient table and come back to the video after making the table what did you observe are some ingredients same mm, yes maybe maybe typically the vegetables cheese like and various sauces may be same are all the ingredients same mm, no why because the first one was a salad and the second one was a pizza does a salad contain a bread or a pizza base no and the second one yes it contains a bread do these both food items taste the same maybe yes maybe no no because yes all the food items all these both these food items contains ingredients which are not typically the same 
Now, can you write the answers of all the three above questions yourself? The last question which arises in our minds are, where do we get all these ingredients required to make these food items? When I talk about the sources of my food, I talk about the sources of my ingredients. Where do I get all these ingredients? My mother buys these ingredients from the market. But from where does the shopkeeper get these ingredients? Hmm, let me think. So I can say that the ingredients are obtained basically from two main sources from the nature. The first source being the plant source and the second source being the animal source. Now children, let us learn in detail about the plant sources and the animal sources. Plant sources. When I look around, I can see that my plants offer me a variety of ingredients for making my food items. Be it fruits, be it vegetables, be it oils. Oils are nothing but the liquid that we obtain from the seeds of my fruits and vegetables. All these food items, all these plant sources have to be eaten every day into a fixed quantity in order to build healthy bodies. Do you complete everything that is given into a plate by your mother? You should to remain healthy. Moving forward, when I talk about plant sources, I talk about plants. Let me take a look at a particular plant. Can you see the plant here? Mm, yes, I can. What do you observe by the plant here? The plant here has got something brown stuck at the roots. What are these brown things? When I look into my kitchen, I see that these brown things are similar to my potatoes. Yes, and now I can identify that this is a potato plant. Which plant of this plant? The which part of this plant do I eat? Mm, do I eat its leaves? No. I have never eaten the leaves of a potato plant. So what do I eat? I eat the part of its stem which is modified into root. And I eat that. I love potatoes. Correct? But I also need to understand what about the leaves and the other parts of the potato plant. Why can't we eat them? Now we have come to a conclusion that we cannot eat all the parts of a plant or use them as our ingredients. Thus, the part of the plant which can be consumed or eaten by us are called edible or eatable plants. Some plants have only one edible part, while some have more than one edible part. Can you write examples of plants which have more than one edible part? Let us think. Edible parts of a plant include stem, roots, leaves, seeds, fruits, etc. Moving forward with the plant sources, we will learn in detail about what is called as sprouts. Have you seen these kind of structures on your seeds? Do you like moong, chana, etc. which your mother makes? Yes. Have you ever wondered why your mother asks you to eat these kind of structures on a day-to-day -day basis? Doesn't she tell you that your mind will increase to tenfold times better if you eat these structures? Hmm. These white structures are grown out of the seeds when they are soaked overnight in water. What are these structures called as? These structures are nothing but sprouts. Sprouts are the germination of the seeds when these seeds are soaked overnight into water. Sprouting seeds or sprouted seeds are more nutritious than non-sprouted seeds. Now I need to understand why does the sprouting happens. When I soak my seeds into water for some time, these small taily structures grow out from it. These structures are actually germinating plants. If you leave these seeds for more time, 
and sow them into the land, you will observe that a small tiny plant will arise out of it. Yes, these are seeds and these are germinating seeds. So now you can understand why these sprouts are more healthier as compared to the seeds which are non-sprouted. Moving forward to the animal sources. Animals like plants also provide us with a variety of ingredients such as variety of meat depending upon the source of the meat whether the meat belongs to a bird like hen, chicken or an animal like pig, fish etc. Then eggs. Variety of eggs are obtained from the sources from which we get the eggs. Third and the most important is honey. We all know that we obtain honey from honeybees. In this chapter, we will learn in detail about how we obtain the honey. Number one thing which comes into my mind from honey is from where do I get the honey? Honey is obtained by the honeybees. The honeybees make this honey by first consuming the nectar from the flowers. Nectar is a sweet juice that is produced in the center of the flower. Now, do you understand why flowers have attractive colors? Yes, so that they can attract honeybees. The honeybees come and sit at the center of the flower and suck the nectar or the sweet juice out. But this nectar is not yet honey. The honeybees collect this nectar from various flowers and store them into their beehives and there they convert it into honey by various processes as you can see in the picture an interesting fact to learn here is that flowers and their nectar are available for only a part of the year so bees store this nectar to be used throughout the year finally when I read the plant and the animal sources, I read about my food items and my ingredients. The last question that comes in my mind is, hmm, what are different animals who eat different different foods called as? The first kind of animal which eats only plant and plant products are called as herbivores. The second kind of animals that eat only meat or other animals are called as herbivores. And the last kind of animals which can eat both plants and animal sources are called as omnivores. The definitions of which are given here. Herbivores, animals that eat only plants and plant products. Carnivores, animals that eat only other animals. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals and their products. Finally, what did we study in the chapter? We studied that food is the basic requirement of life and it has its two sources. The first source is a plant source and the other source is the animal source. What are the edible parts or the ingredients that we obtain from the plants and the animals? Roots, leaves, stems, fruits, flowers are the plants, sources, edible parts. Milk, meat, eggs, poultry are the edible parts of animals. Plants and animals both are eaten by omnivores. Only plants are eaten by herbivores and only animals are eaten by carnivores. This brings us to the end of the chapter. 